So welcome again to another session. This uh, webinar today, we're gonna talk about uh, data and uh, we're gonna start doing data analysis um, while accessing the data to, uh, that we collect with the sensors. Um, so requirements, not, not much this time, just um, computer access to the internet and maybe some data to analyze, although it's not really mandatory. And uh, yes, as, as I said, we're gonna talk about uh, data and first, um, let's uh, just uh, do a quick recap of what we can do with the kit in terms of uh, data login. So you know that when you configure the device, you have two options. You can either um, collect data uh, online, uh, which is the, the, the way that we normally collect data by sending data over Wi-Fi and to the platform, or you can store it on, on the offline SD card. Now, um, both of them, uh, we, we are gonna see tools uh, that will allow us to um, access the data in both cases. Um, and uh, the, the most advanced data tools that we will start looking at today and keep going on, on Thursday are gonna be uh, basically um, uh, agnostic with respect to where uh, the data source come from. Uh, some of the other tools, um, of course, will need to either a connection to uh, Wi-Fi well, or to, to, to the platform in, in some way. And for instance, if you just simply analyze data on a spreadsheet like uh, uh, for the SD card data, um, this is uh, only, only limited to, to that case. So um, just a small distinction and, and to make sure when you are in network mode, um, the data goes from the, uh, the kit to the platform. Um, mainly we will access this data through what we call uh, REST API. Um, the API um, we will see today is basically the interface that our platform uh, exposes for you to get access to any data that we uh, provide. And you can access it via website, the smartcitizen.me website, or the dashboard, or Python scripts, or basically anything. Actually, you can make your own scripts on your own um, tools to access the data from the API. And uh, importantly is that the API is open, so anyone can, can get uh, the data from any device. It doesn't have to be your device. It can be any device. We also offer an interface for that it's called WebSockets um, in case that you want to get a real-time updates. Um, as soon as the kit uh, sends data, it can forward you or you can get a notification uh, that new data has arrived with the data that you, that you get. And this is um, as soon as it gets to our platform, uh, you will get the data um, forwarded to you. This is normally used in case that you want to do um, applications, web visualizations, or maybe something that really needs uh, real time. Uh, this is probably um, the fastest way. The API normally is a little bit slower uh, and WebSockets is uh, direct. Uh, as soon as it gets to our platform, you get a notification. Then, um, Offline mode, well, the data doesn't leave the, the smart citizen kit at all. Uh, so if uh, you set the, date, the, the kit to uh, only record on the, on the SD card, even if you configure a Wi-Fi, uh, for instance, because you want the, the, the kit to get um, uh, the uh, timestamp from the internet, um, it won't leave the SD card, the, the SDK, it will always stay in, in the SD card and in the SD card only. And of course, you need to extract the SD card from the kit to, to load the data somewhere. And maybe in the future, we will provide ways for you to get the data from the SD card via USB cable, but it's not supported at the moment. So you always have to get uh, the SD card out of the kit and put it on an adapter and on your computer. And, uh, and then you will be able to, to have a look at the data. Um, uh, extra comment uh, in network mode, as you know, if the data, if there's an SD card uh, on the on the kit, you will get also the 
the data on on the SD card as well as on the platform. And this is a good backup in case um, you lose uh, connectivity or things like this. So very briefly, um, I'm gonna talk very briefly or do a small recap of the offline or SD card mode, and we will talk about more uh, more in depth on on the next session, uh, only because we will need to go a little bit on some basics for the data analysis framework so that we are able to talk about more advanced things that we can do with the SD card data. So just a, um, a small recap about this, just remember that uh, there will be a CSV file in the SD card per day um, and then the header um, of the CSV file looks like something like this. You will have a short um, uh, name uh, for the for the channel, then the units, then a small description, and then in the fourth line you have the uh, channels or the IDs. And in case that you want to take this data and upload it to the the platform, you will see uh, that well you need to keep uh, this structure so that the platform is able to understand uh, what column is going where. So um, we don't use the the row, the, the first, second, or third row, but we use the number in the fourth row, so 55, 56, 10, et cetera, to identify the channel. So that is important that you don't delete it in case that you want to upload the data to the platform. And um, we will see on the next session how do we uh, use this data in a more advanced way, especially because if you're recording, for instance, for a month, then you will have 30 um, CSV files. And that already is not easy to handle. And many of them will contain uh, errors or not a numbers and things like that. So we will see how can we concatenate and read all the data easily on uh, Python in particular, and then upload it to the SD card or, or, or get all the data concatenated and be ready for analysis. But we will see that um, next day uh, on the, the following session. And today we will focus a little bit on getting started with a little bit more advanced uh, tools so that we um, get things going, and then we can talk about uh, CSV files. So for online data, um, the important thing to understand is that all the data will reside on our platform. The data is sent uh, from the kit uh, over Wi-Fi, and that the database that we um, use to store the data in um, uh, exposes the data through what we call the REST API. So API is an application programming interface and basically is a way for uh, servers or platforms to expose data to the outer world in a controlled way. So what you uh, do with uh, this interface is that you do requests uh, for data, for instance, regarding devices, sensors, uh, users, etc., and then it will respond. And you can use that data in many places. So one of the ways that we use it is, for instance, in web-based visualizations. Whenever you visit uh, a smart citizen.me or the dashboard, um, when the website uh, is loading, uh, what your computer is doing is uh, doing a request to our API, and then the API is sending you the data. Similarly, um, when you do uh, a download for the uh, CSV, um, our platform is uh, processing uh, uh, the data from your device, and then you can download the data by getting it on, a, on an email. And uh, in a different fashion, and what we will start seeing today is using a script to access this uh, API. So the power of, um, of the API doesn't reside uh, only on the web visualizations, but also on our capacity to have a script that can uh, do requests um, in a, like an automated way. And then we can do um, 
more advanced and cool things with that data uh, in order to well, analyze it or calibrate sensors or um, visualize the data in whatever way we want that is not limited by the, the platform itself. Moving on then, we right now support different scripts or ways for us to access the data uh, through the API. Um, we will see today uh, uh, how to get data in R and how to get data in Python, but any uh, language or any scripting language that is able to do um, HTTP requests will be able to interface with our API and all of them will have a, a very similar way. It is important to just understand the basics so that you can at, at some point even program your own, uh, your own interfaces. So um, what is the API doing or how does this work? Um, so let me just uh, this do this by an example. So if we visit our API, uh, it is as simple as just visiting a website called HTTP as uh, colon slash slash API dot smart citizen economy. And here you will see that you get um, uh, data that is in what we call JSON format. JSON format is this uh, format that has uh, curly brackets uh, and that is a structured format um, that is used in, in general uh, to share uh, data. Um, and when we structure that uh, response, we get something like this. Each of these points or each of these URLs is called endpoint, uh, which is uh, a URL that we can visit or that we can make a request to, and it will give us uh, data. For instance, if I go to the sensors URL, which is uh, the same as the base URL of the API, but appending v0 slash sensors, I will get all the sensors that are currently supported in the Smart Citizen project. You see that zero, one, two, three, et cetera, et cetera, down to 24 in this case, but the, the API is limiting to 25 sensors. If I request all of them, then I will get down to 177 sensors. Each of them with a description, with um, a small um, uh, name uh, and the manufacturer, for instance, some extra data uh, and other, for instance, extra information, for instance, the units and, and the related measurements that is attached to. Other endpoints will give us order data. So what we're gonna learn how to do today is to understand how do we uh, request the different endpoints um, and how do we get that data and then make use of it. The important ones are gonna be the devices one. Each device that you configure and you start uh, recording data on the Smart Citizen platform will have a URL uh, that is, um, the base URL plus devices, and then the device ID. Another important one is the kits. The kits will give us the structure of the sensors and the different related metrics that your particular device uh, has. It's basically defining what we call the blueprint of the device. Uh, for instance, in the small smart citizen kit, you will have a um, temperature, humidity, noise, pressure, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and that is one kit. On the station, for instance, you will have uh, conductivity, pH, dissolved oxygen, etc., and that is another type of kit. So basically, the kits will give us the blueprint that we have on the um, on each of the uh, on each of the devices, and then 
the other endpoints will give us more information. Some of the other interesting ones are, for instance, the tags. Um, tags are ways uh, that you can, for instance, uh, use uh, uh, to put filters uh, on visualizations or to collect uh, devices that are associated with different uh, tags. And then you are able to uh, either filter them or categorize them depending on, on the type of tag. So for instance, we created a tag for um, sensors that are on the first floor or the second floor or in the kitchen or related to a certain project, for instance, a uh, mink or ice cape or making sense, right? Just uh, as a final comment, uh, you will see um, if you want to develop anything around the API, for instance, you want to develop a website or you want to connect it, uh, our API to another platform, you can visit the documentation, which is available on developer.smartcitizen.me. And here you can see how you can access uh, the different endpoints and what is the basic structure of our API and the uh, type of request that you have to do uh, to collect um, each, uh, each of the data. Okay. So this is basic, um, let's say the basic structure of, um, of the API. Now we're gonna go through different um, already uh, working uh, tools that uh, you can use to uh, access the data or do different tasks. So today we will talk about um, the dashboard, um, a small web visualization we developed that might be useful for certain activities, uh, either for quick data analysis, for um, an easy download of the data, or maybe to do uh, some showcase of the data, uh, either on a big screen or even in semi real time, which is a very easy to, to access, but of course, um, limited. And then we will start talking about two um, more advanced data analysis um, languages, which are uh, Python and R. Python is a more generic uh, programming language. Uh, it's um, not only used for data analysis, but for many, many things. Uh, and uh, with it, we have developed a very extensive uh, framework for data analysis that is connecting to our API, but also to other APIs and other uh, type of data sources. And um, in R, we also have developed a very simple connector, but that will allow you to already get the data from our API. And then if you have already knowledge in R programming, then you will be in accessing uh, data easily and you will be able to develop your own scripts and visualizations for, for the data from the API. Both of them are very advanced and powerful and can handle a huge amount of data in a very efficient way. So it would be the recommended way for you to analyze data uh, instead of, for instance, using a spreadsheets or things like this, um, which of course, um, are, are very valuable, but when you want to handle, for instance, months of uh, data in a minute resolution, it becomes a little bit slow to use um, a spreadsheet and it's better to use um, a more advanced scripting software. So things that you can use with this um, or that you can do with this will be to get the data from, from the kits. Um, either online through API request or offline um, by uh, loading SD card data and concatenating it um, to visualize the data. You can uh, calibrate sensors or develop uh, models for uh, sensor calibration. You can download data from our devices and other uh, device sources. Um, a lot of um, Data sources now have open API, so you can uh, get uh, data from them. You can also export data uh, either in CSV files or other formats. Uh, you can generate reports and create uh, websites uh, with um, 
the data that you have analyzed. You can send the data to Zenodo uh, already connected um, or embedded in the framework uh, in Python. You can directly uh, create a Zenodo data set. And finally, uh, you can also forward the data of um, our uh, API or other sources to your own API. So you could program interfaces for you to connect and send data to your own server or platform. So um, as a warning or as a consideration is that sometimes, um, especially in the Python case, it's a little bit of a longer setup, but of course uh, you get very advanced features. <clears throat> 